almost all cancers can spread to the pleura. And as a result, it causes pleural effusion, which is building up of fluid in the pleural cavity. And as a result, people often can't breathe, they can't walk, they can't do their daily activities. So it's a significant impact on quality of life. In America alone, it's estimated that it spends five billion US dollars each year for hospital care of patients with malignant pleural effusion. So lung cancer is a significant cause for malignant pleural effusion. In about one in three or one in four patients with lung cancer will develop pleural effusion sometime during the disease course. And the management is unfortunately often suboptimal. And uh, the goal is to try to relieve the symptoms, draining the fluid, and trying to allow the people, to, the patients, to do more uh, in the daily activities and spend the time in the way they want. Uh, malignant pre-vision causes a lot of hospitalizations. Each year, it's about 125,000 episodes of hospitalization. These hospitalizations cost a lot of money, and importantly, cost patients valuable time in hospital um, that they cannot spend in their daily um, life and also it interrupts all their cancer treatment. So the world doesn't have a very good way of managing these effusions. I think in the ideal world, we want to stop this fluid by giving the patient a tablet to take, an injection to have, instead of doing interventional drainages, which is what we have to do nowadays. Um, uh, the traditional way is to try to expand the lung and then try to put in talcum powder, like a glue, to try to stick up the lung to glue it to the chest wall and stop the fluid from. And unfortunately, that only works in about 70% um, of people whose lung expands and the fluid drainage rate is below a certain volume. The um, they are unfortunately about one third of the population with malignant pro who cannot even attempt to have tau pruritesis. So all in all, tau pruritesis will only work in less than half of the people with lung cancer. So a, a, a while back, um, many groups in the world, including our group, uh, started um, looking for alternative ways. And one of the ways is to put in indwelling pleural catheters, which are long-standing tubes that we place inside people's chest to drain the effusions. And people can then drain it at home. And ample one which is we led, and also the time two, <clears throat> the time two study led by the Oxford group, both shows that if you use the indwelling pleural catheter, it, uh, the patient stays fewer days in hospital. They require far less uh, interventional procedures, um, and the quality of life is as good as conventional tap pleurodesis. So that sets off a, a whole new field of research on indwelling pleural catheters. And the AMBO2 study that we just uh, we published a while back now uh, shows that if you put the patients to daily drainages, it increases the chance of developing spontaneous pleurodesis so the fluid will stop by itself so that you can remove the catheter. And we have recently published sub uh, studies out of AMBO2, which shows that by putting the patient on daily drainages, it also improves the quality of life, as well as allowing them to walk more and do more as measured by accelerometry. Um, so they do more walking steps a day and also do more um, moderate to vigorous exercise a day, which is what patient with cancer wants. Um, so we now also uh, incorporated um, a study published in the New England Journal called the IPC Plus study that shows that if you can put talc through the indwelling pleural catheter, it can also increase the success rate of removing the catheter by stopping the fluid formation. So we are now on to ample free study, which is uh, hopefully towards the end stage of this recruitment, um, which compares indwelling pleural catheter plus or minus talc versus surgical pleurodesis in patients who have malignant pleural effusion, but relatively good prognosis and are in good performance status. Um, I think the world has accepted that indwelling pleural cancer is a good management method for people with very advanced cancer. So we are now testing it, extending to the group of people who are fitter 
um, and have better prognosis with malignant pleural effusion. And we've just started, which is um, a, a randomized trial to look at putting topical antibiotics around the indwelling pleural cavity to see if you can reduce the risk of infection. So infection um, is one of the biggest um, concerns of both patients and oncologists in terms of using indwelling pleural cavity because each infection requires hospitalization, requires antibiotics, uh, interrupts oncology treatment, and occasionally can be quite serious. So in peritoneal dialysis, um, people have run randomized trial, which shows that putting topical antibiotics around the peritoneal dialysis catheter significantly reduces peritoneal dialysis peritonitis. So we have just uh, had a pilot study uh, accepted for publication um, showing that in 50 patients with indwelling pleural catheter, the topical antibiotics was tolerable, was safe, um, and has good compliance by patients. And our patient consumer group is very keen about any methods that can reduce the risk of infection. So we've just started um, uh, two or three weeks ago, this multi-center randomized trial, which compares uh, topical antibiotics in the form of milpiroxine versus no antibiotics at all um, in looking to see if it can reduce the chance of 